What's up everybody? Uh, today I'm going to be talking about elephant's foot and what might be causing it on your Ender 3V2 or any other printer that uses a lead screw design. Uh, this is something that uh, started to show in my prints that uh, was actually causing me an issue. So if you guys have seen my other videos you know that I sell these trading card cases that I design and I've noticed that some of them the hinge here started welding together this one actually didn't weld together but it was very much on its way you can see how tight that is the pl plastics actually rubbing together and here is a print of what it should look like there should be a nice gap in between the case body and the hinge and that allows for the hinge to open up without any interference so this 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 happened on two of my printers I have 17 printers on my farm right now and two of them started welding together and then this third printer um, like I said was pretty much on its way so I couldn't figure out what it was what was causing that issue I knew it was elephant's foot but I didn't know how to fix it because um, I use this exact same file across all of my printers and so if some printers were printing the file perfectly fine and coming out flawless I, why, I was asking myself why is it that these printers are now, are now starting to show this elephant's foot so I've seen videos on YouTube, um, more specifically Maker's Muse made a excellent video on elephant's foot and one of the things that he mentioned to fix elephant's foot was to create these designs or to create um, kind of these chamfers in your design to compensate for elephant's foot. Well, I, I, although the video was great in information and I, and, and I learned, you know, some good valuable information from that video it didn't it didn't give me the answer that I needed because I knew that it wasn't software related or it wasn't my design file or my g-code file uh, I knew it had to be hardware so after you know many days of troubleshooting and trying to figure out exactly why this was happening I've adjusted my Z offset on my printer I've adjust I've Releveled the bed. I did everything that I could and then it just hit me one day that to look at the lead screw Now the lead screw here on the under three um, Has this lead screw nut and well what I started realizing it is that the nut was worn out and the lead screw the lead screw has a harder material than, than the brass nut, so this brass nut is considered a consumable. After so many hours of printing, the lead screw starts to eat away at the brass nut and it becomes too loose. So what that does is that introduces backlash. And well actually, the lead screw and um, brass nut already have a bit of backlash, even if you buy a brand new um, lead screw nut. But over time, all the printing and the movement of the lead screw against the lead screw nut, it kind of eats away at it and causes more backlash. So if you don't know what backlash is, I'm just going to give a little bit, a little demonstration that I found on YouTube. Uh, it was a YouTuber that gave an excellent demonstration using a crescent wrench or adjustable wrench. Uh, so I'm going to just kind of give you a quick overview of of what uh, backlash is and why uh, it's causing elephant's foot for my prints. All right, so I have this adjustable wrench for demonstration purposes of how the lead screw and lead screw nut work together to lift your gantry. So imagine that this jaw of the crescent wrench is, is the gantry, right? And so you have the lead screw and these outer gears or these outer teeth are uh, what the lead screw nut is so if you if you start to turn your uh, lead screw or let's say you make a command to your z motor your z stepper motor it will start to turn that lead screw and it'll engage on the top of these of these teeth on the lead screw nut and it'll start to move your gantry 
up, right? And so as you print, the, the Z stepper motor just keeps adjusting these lead screw and you know for each layer that you want uh, in your print or for each uh, Z layer um, it will it will move up right well what I what I started noticing is that whenever I home my um, or whenever I br begin a print with my uh, 3d printers I actually have a BL touch and so this is constantly going up and down, up and down to do the probing on the bed. So after it finishes probing, it begins the print by moving down. Okay, so now it's moving down and the lead screw is engaged with the bottom of the teeth and then it starts printing. Well, when it wants to move up to the next layer, it actually tries to go up. Well, when it goes up, because of that backlash, it doesn't actually move the gantry up. It's, it it kind of stays in that dead zone or backlash. And uh, the gantry doesn't actually move up. And I'm going to demonstrate that with the dial gauge. And this was the, this was the, the main reason of why my layers were welding together because while it was trying to print the second layer, the gantry didn't move. So instead, it just it just extruded all the plastic right on top of the other layer and it oozed over. So let me show you with the dial gauge uh, exactly what I'm talking about and hopefully it makes a little bit more sense. All right, so I got my dial gauge set up here and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna demonstrate after a G29 uh, command, which is to probe the bed. After it, it probes the bed, it comes and starts printing its first layer. So what happens is it starts making its way down. And now, like I mentioned in, uh, with the uh, adjustable wrench demonstration, the teeth are now engaged with the bottom of the uh, uh, lead screw nut. So I'm gonna zero out this gauge here Right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my display and for my move Z command, I'm going to move 0.3 millimeters. So look at what it actually moved. It actually moved 0.07 millimeters. I'm going to do another 0.3 Z move up. And so we're at 2.25 millimeters. So you can see what's actually happening here is the, the when you send a command to move the gantry up 0.3 millimeters it's not actually doing that it's moving so we just sent 0.6 millimeters to the printer and it only moved 0.26 millimeters right so if we keep doing that 0.9 1.5 Uh, 1.5 it's 1.8 2.1 2.4 so you get the idea we're already short half a millimeter roughly now there's eight millimeters in one revolution of the lead screw so if we go ahead and go to eight millimeters right I'm gonna zero this out so now that the gantry has moved up, we technically should start seeing accurate movements. So we'll do another 0.3. It's getting closer. We'll do another 0.3. So we're short by 0.06 millimeters. So if we keep moving up, we move, we really get all that that uh, lead screw nut to engage at the top. Okay, so let me zero this out. Let me move 0.3 again. So it's, it's getting there. So all the backlash is pretty much out. Another 0.3. Another 0.3. 
right? So you can see how the backlash is actually hurting your initial layers and causing that elephant's foot. So this is just something that I found um, that's causing me my issues with my wel uh, welding my first layers together. And the solution that I uh, tried to come up with was to put an anti-backlash nut. And I actually installed an anti-backlash nut on one of my printers and it reduced the backlash a lot. Um, instead of, let's say, 0.25 millimeters of backlash, it went down to like 0.1, which was good. I mean, it, I didn't have that issue anymore. Uh, but uh, if you have this issue, I recommend changing your lead screw nut and getting an anti-backlash nut. So that should help with um, any elephant's foot or welding of your first layers that have tight tolerances. And uh, yeah, I hope this uh, was kind of eye-opening for some of uh, for you guys and gals. Um, like I said, it took me a couple days to figure this out. I mean, I was thinking about it 24-7. Took Yeah, actually it took more than a couple days. Probably did take a week. Until I finally just had my aha moment. But yeah, I hope this, uh, this my discovery, uh, you know, uh, will help some of you guys and gals to uh, fixing any issues that you might have with elephant's foot. So before I end this video, I really want to say that this dial gauge is the best tool that I have in my toolbox. And this thing helps me find all kinds of issues with the printer and I highly recommend that you purchase one. I'm going to leave a link in the description for this from Amazon. Um, it's not an affiliate link or anything like that. I'm just going to share it with you guys so that you can purchase one if you don't have one already. And uh, yeah, this thing is super helpful. I'm going to make videos on how I level the bed with it and just kind of check things overall with the 3D printer. Um, and another thing I'm going to say is thank you so, so much to everybody that has subscribed to the channel. Um, it's, I have almost 400 subscribers now, which is super unexpected, but it makes me feel good knowing that people enjoy the video and it is helping people. I like reading the comments that the, the videos are helping you. So I, I, I'm not a professional YouTuber. I'm just a guy that you know bought a bunch of printers and I'm selling this product this idea that I had so anything that I come up with that um, is kind of a roadblock for me and I come to a solution I want to share that because chances are other people are probably experiencing the same thing so like I said I, I'm gonna try to post videos that are helpful and relevant I'm not gonna I'm not gonna try to pump out content you know just to create a big channel or anything like that I just want you guys to come here because there's valuable information to be learned. And uh, yeah, that's my goal for the, for the videos that I'm going to make. Anyways, I hope this video was really helpful. And I just want to say thank you again for watching. And uh, yeah, stay tuned for the next video. Thank you.